Thank you again for joining us here on Live Now from Fox, just about 5.30 on the East Coast. And I do want to talk more about this breaking news on Capitol Hill about the passing on the House of this uh, CR, this interim spending bill to avoid a shutdown. Chad Pergram, Fox News, Capitol Hill reporter, saying the vote was a 341 to 82. All Dems, 209 of them casting ballots that voted yay, 132 Republicans voting yay as well. Let's take you right now out to Speaker Mike Johnson as he discusses this uh, continuing resolution. Of course, over the weekend, we heard that they had removed the SAVE Act, which it did not get through the House last week, a big point of contention there, even on the GOP side. Let's listen in to what he has to say uh, here on Live Now from Fox. Agenda to counter China, Iran, and Russia. And we have conducted crucial oversight. We impeached Secretary Mayorkas. We held Merrick Garland in contempt. We combated anti-Semitism on college campuses. We have worked hard to hold the administration accountable for the failed Afghanistan withdrawal. We, we fought the woke, wasteful, and weaponized agenda of the Biden-Harris administration. And we investigated not just one, but two assassination attempts on the president's life, President Trump's life. And that work continues in earnest even today. And right now, the American people need us more than ever. Under the Biden-Harris administration, the American people are struggling. Their disastrous economic policies are crushing American families. Their weakness on the world stage has emboldened our adversaries, and the world is quite literally on fire. Crime is rising in cities across the country. Terrorists, criminals, and drugs are flowing across our border and terrorizing our communities. We just have 41 days left until this very fateful election. And we're going to continue fighting tirelessly for America's families. We we're going to grow the majority here in the House. We are going to get President Trump reelected to the White House, and we are going to win the Senate on the other side of the Capitol. And we can hit the ground running and deliver for the American people on day one of President Trump's second term, and that day cannot get here soon enough. I'll take a few questions. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, do you commit to not putting any omnibus on the floor come December? I've said very clear we're not going to return to the omnibus uh, tradition. We, we worked very hard to break that tradition. As you know, we broke it into many buses in the last time. We've got to build back muscle memory to run Congress the way it's supposed to run. And the Republicans are committed to doing that. So this will be uh, a very important step. And we'll see what happens in December. My encouragement to my Senate colleagues is to do your work. Bring some appropriations bills to the floor and pass them so that we can all work together to get this job done. Mr. Speaker, Chad. You served on the weaponization. Supposition made today by Michael Horowitz, the Inspector General of the DOJ, that there may have in fact been covert federal agents in the crowd at the Capitol prior to the riot. Do you know anything about that and what do you make of that if that's in fact true, which he intimated could be in fact in his report? It, I heard that uh, on the floor just now. I've had a busy uh, couple of days, but uh, that is an alarming. Uh, bit of information. Obviously, we will be digging into it further, and I'll be requesting classified briefings on that. If, if that is indeed uh, the case, we got to get the, down to the bottom of that immediately. Mr. Yes. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Can you put odds on the way that you feel about Republicans keeping the majority? And what odds would you put on? Oh, I'm very bullish about November. I, I've been traveling the country nonstop. Some of you know what I've been doing. I, I've done campaign events in 207 cities across 39 states so far, and I have a full, every day, full agenda all the way through the election. What I'm seeing around the country is uh, a real energy on the ground. I don't think the polling is even accurately reflecting that, but even the polling, uh, all, almost all the polls favor the House uh, Republicans to keep and grow the majority. So uh, I expect a very strong November. I'm, I'm convinced we're going to win the Senate as well, and I believe Donald Trump's going back to the White House. Um, I would be a fool to project a certain number of seats, but let me just say I'm very optimistic. I mean, we, we have, I'll just say this, we have extraordinary candidates in the field to flip some of these seats from blue to red and to fill the open seats and it's at the end of the day it's not about the the quantity of the cash it's the quality of the candidate and and the people that we have out making the case and providing answers are providing it in the right tone and with great credibility and so it is just uh, really been resonated well I think with the American people are you intent to move forward as speaker even if you're or as Republican leader if, even if you guys can't hold the house 
uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I, I believe we're going to hold the House, and I intend to uh, be the Speaker in the new Congress. I think continuity is going to be very important. I mean, we, we're laying out a very aggressive agenda for the first 100 days. I believe we'll have unified government, and so there will be a lot of uh, responsibility upon us. So we don't put the cart before the horse, but we have to be prepared to lead, and we will. And uh, I intend to lead this group uh, into the next Congress. Any, any, any comment on the tweet that Clay Higgins put out today about Haitians? I heard about that on the floor just now as well. Clay Higgins is a dear friend of mine and a colleague from Louisiana. Louisiana and a, a, a very uh, frank and outspoken person. He's also a very principled man. And uh, I think he tweeted, I, I didn't even see it, but he tweeted something today about Haitians and uh, he was, he was, uh, he was, he, he was approached. Okay. Well, look, he was approached on the floor by colleagues who said that was offensive. He went to the back. I just talked to him about it. He said he went to the back and he prayed about it and he regretted it and he pulled the post down. That's what you want a gentleman to do. I'm sure he probably regrets some of the language he used, but, um, you know, we move forward. We believe in redemption around here. Are you yeah. confident? You on, on, on uh, President Zelensky to fire Ambassador Mark Carver. I did. Could you explain this and also tell uh, what if she wouldn't be fired? Well, listen, I, I sent a letter to um, President Zelensky today because the ambassador crossed the line, and I, and I think she, uh, she involved him in that. They, they made a uh, campaign stop on behalf of the, uh, the Democratic Party and effectively have given a tacit endorsement uh, to Kamala Harris. That's not what we need our allies to be doing or any foreign nation. I think it's election interference, and I think it's an, an unforgivable trespass, and I think the ambassador uh, needs to take responsibility for that and be terminated. So I, I asked him to do that immediately, and I think that's an Mr. important Speaker, request. Are you